Hi, I'm here today with Chang Hong Wu. He's Group Vice President of Engineering with Juniper, and we're talking about uh, the future of networking. Hi, Chang Wu. Welcome. Good to uh, good to talk to you today. Uh, happy to be here, Sterling. Thank you. Yeah, looking forward to it. So um, you've uh, been in the industry some time. I, I can see the lanyards uh, behind you and then the background. Uh, quite a few conferences in, in your past. You've been with Juniper for a while. Um, I'm curious, can you talk about what are some of the major changes that you've seen in networking, um, say, over the past two, two years? Yeah, I have been uh, with Juniper for uh, more than 24 years. You can say that's quite a long time, yeah. Uh, I've been uh, leading the uh, def architectural definition and the development of many generations of the innovative product, uh, silicon as well as uh, the products we, we, we get to the market. Yeah, in terms of changes, right? Uh, as they say, the more uh, things change, the more stay the same. I can certainly talk about both. Um, talk about things that are staying the same, uh, the continued exponential growth of traffic have uh, always been there and, and, and there is no sign of slowing. Um, that might drive a higher density uh, routers, interface cards, and also higher uh, higher speed interfaces like 400 gig and, and towards 800 gig these days. And also the overall need of uh, addressing the challenges uh, to reduce the uh, TCO, the total cost of ownership. Um, that is the thing that are about the same, but the things are changing is that the, the very nature uh, of the TCO concern is changing. Uh, the, uh, we, our customer emphasizes, uh, emphasize the sustainability uh, a lot more. Um, and also, um, in terms of the networks, uh, they are also getting more specialized. Uh, with the core networks more focusing on the uh, speeds and feeds, uh, just the sh uh, sheer throughput of the network. Uh, when it comes to the multi-service edge, right, the, um, the emphasis has been more towards the, um, the uh, scalable uh, service and intelligence and for the residential business and the data center in the connects and also for policy enforcements. Uh, that's where I see a new wave of challenges emerging. Um, and also all the data centers um, are all pushing more towards the edge. That's what they call edge computing. And they are addressing a lot of the emerging applications um, like the enhanced uh, machine learning uh, at the edge. And that drive a lot of the applications uh, that are changing in scale a lot more bandwidth, and that's what and 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 that's what is driving the changes in the multi-service edge network. So some some of the the major trends that we're seeing, and, and you just kind of hit on hit on them there um, in in uh, in the introduction. Um, edge networking, um, edge computing, and then edge networking, which is you know the connectivity and the part that I look at and that you look at uh, as Juniper, as well as the machine learning and artificial in intelligence. Um, can't really read the news anywhere these days without machine learning and, and AI, uh, and it certainly applies to networking as well. Can you talk a little bit about how, how those two kind of mega trends, edge, edge networking and um, AI slash ML um, go together? Yes, during the, indeed, I, uh, it, it, we, we, we hardly uh, not see a, 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 a dozen of uh, chat GPT postings uh, every day, right? Um, there, there are also so much data that generated every day uh, from, from, from the edge of the network. Now the uh, internet of things, the sensors, the 5G, the smartphone, the smart cars, uh, generally generates a lot of data at the network. And also those data need to be processed, right? Um, and and that, and, and just the sheer number of that uh, requires intelligent processing at the edge. And, and, and also increasing use of machine learning and training inference. And all, all of these are con also constantly changing. Um, um, so there's a lot of new application emerging every day. And 
And one of the examples uh, I, I can provide is that uh, we, uh, in the last couple of years, uh, we did a research project uh, with a team of researchers at MIT. Um, initially, they are, they are doing a, a very large scale machine learning uh, model training, distributed ones um, with multiple servers. And, and we embarked, it, we embarked on, on, on a uh, research that using the Trio ASIC, uh, which is in our MX uh, Edge platform, uh, to actually aggregate the machine training waves uh, inside the network, inside the router themselves, that's accelerating the, um, the, the overall machine learning model training by a factor of, of, of almost uh, 2x over the state of the art and 6x over the software only um, uh, approaches. And that's, that's kind of shows the, the uh, importance of programmability of our Trio ASICs, uh, the MX platforms on the edge, uh, in terms of uh, addressing the emerging applications. Yeah, let's get get into some of the the design requirements. Um, you, something you're you're quite close to, of course, in, in your role. I mean, if if we look at the the major attributes that um, that we're hearing about are re requirements for platforms, you know, systems to have greater performance, the migration to to you know greater data rates, four hundred gig, eight hundred gig, and 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 beyond, both within the data center and and um, across the distances, uh, interconnecting them. Uh, and there's other aspects of performance as well. So we've got performance, uh, sustainability, which is a huge um, trend globally, corporations and, and governments, um, important to companies to, to meet those sustainability goals, but also things like you know lower power, smaller footprint also help the bottom line, which is also quite critical. So you've got that. And then a, probably a third one would be just the complexity of services uh, at the edge as, as we kind of focus in on these edge trends. Um, you know, so there's three things, but they're they're all kind of different directions. Do you see them as as mutually exclusive? And and how, as as a a vendor building product, do you address these diverse types of requirements? Yeah, Sterling. It, 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 if you look at the, the the trends in our industry, uh, I will agree that those um, does uh, do sound a little bit uh, mutually exclusive, right? Uh, we are actually at a very interesting point in our discussion about network evolution. Um, and and in, in a way also, uh, we keep evolving our, our, our silicon, our system in terms of uh, greater performance at the same time as reducing the, the power consumption and, and, and all that. And at Juniper, we also um, try to uh, satisfy these dif different requirements with different set of silicons. And that's why we have the Trio ASIC uh, for the multi-service edge and the Express ASIC for, for the, for the uh, more uh, performance-oriented core networks. And we don't take these uh, decisions lightly, right? So uh, silicon uh, development at these submicron uh, uh, error are complex and risky. So, but then but then also the requirement from our customers also have diverged needs. That's why we invest in, in these two different lines of, 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 of silicons. Um, and the Trio ASICs are speci uh, specialized uh, in, in, in multi-service edge uh, applications with its programmability, very flexible, and also very scalable in addressing uh, all these needs at the edge for the emerging as well as the existing uh, uh, applications would, would uh, deliver better performance and better serviceability. Um, in addition, right, so we also have different form factors uh, of the MX platforms uh, into, uh, available on the market with the large, uh, the larger uh, chassis based uh, systems as well as the compact small form factor devices we, we just introduced to the market with the Trio the sixth generation of the true ASIC as well. Yeah, interesting. So it's not one size fits all, both at the platform level, but even at the the, the chip level, um, a need for ASIC, certainly not all merchant silicon uh, going forward. Is is there a role, do you, is there a role though for both merchant and and, and the ASIC uh, as you look particularly at the, at the edge? Um, in the network, in the total network itself, there are certainly uh, needs for multi, multiple clusters uh, uh, of, 
of ASICs, uh, whether it's internal develop or, or merchant. Uh, at Juniper, we, we, we use them all depending on, on the job at hand. Uh, on the edge, we, we uh, because of the scalability requirement and the flexibility requirement, we mainly use uh, our internal design trail ASIC, uh, which is us, which was specially designed for 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 the applications uh, and the future emerging application as well. Just I I mentioned for the AI uh, ML use cases. Right, interesting. The, there's the demands are, are so much as we look at the edge. It's it's not simply a smaller you know smaller core. There's a lot going on. Um, Last trend um, that we're hearing about that I'm sure you as well is network automation. You can't really have too many conversations without automation coming up, covering a number of different things uh, in our surveys, certainly. Uh, I'm curious when you talk to your customers, uh, and if you want to kind of parse them by type of customer, that's fine as well. But when you talk to customers, what are the main use cases that um, they're asking you about for automation? Um, you, you, you are correct. There are certainly many different uh, drivers for network automation, and, and different customers have different uh, needs as well. Um, and one thing I hear uh, a lot it, it is that the customer wants automated operations. Um, so um, when, when, for example, when uh, the network bandwidth is in demand in one place, it's not available, it's, it, it, it's available in another place, or a failure of a, a particular link goes down, and people want automated uh, recovery of, 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 of the operations. Um, but the important thing to remember is that not all the automation stories are created equal. Uh, the underlying hardware support is crucial to enable some of the automations uh, in a smooth way. Uh, for example, uh, in our trail ASIC uh, is uh, our, our way of handling uh, failures, uh, network failure protection. Uh, in, in many of the network scenarios, there could be like tens of thousands or even millions of paths that go through a particular link, right, for the fat links. Uh, if that link fails, um, the network operation requires switching all those paths into a backup path, uh, into a backup link. Um, that could take a long time if the network uh, underlying hardware is not supporting these kind of failure scenario auto, uh, in, a, in an efficient way. Um, but with Trio and our MX platform, um, we, we, we support a scale of more than like 50 million routes, right? So we can pre-program the backup path inside our memories. And also because uh, our uh, data structure is so flexible, uh, we can program them in a way that uh, we can, with just one uh, change of the memory pointer, we can switch all the failure fail path from one link to the other without without rewriting like tens of thousands or, or millions of, of, of diff different uh, next hops, if, if you will. And that, Kind of eliminating the 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 dead time between these failure switchovers, and that's one of the unique uh, um, uh, features uh, and our our ASICs and our platform provides uh, for the network automation. All right, excellent. Um, maybe to wrap up, uh, we talked about you know kind of the the evolution. We've talked about some of the key themes today. Um, in the final moments, can you just talk a bit about what we can expect from Juniper in twenty twenty three? to hit on some of these requirements? Yeah, clearly uh, what we did in 2022 uh, is the foundation of what we will, uh, you will see us doing in 2023 and beyond. Um, we, we, we just released a, a, uh, the, the uh, chassis as well as the uh, compact form factor uh, MX product to the market uh, in, in the past two years. And, and we have the right product to address uh, many of the uh, 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 customers' use cases. And also we have the vision of the future uh, of uh, evolving our silicon as well as a platform towards uh, the more uh, flexible and more agile edge framework. Um, we are to focus on the operational simplicity and also service delivery and also at the meantime, we keep evolving our silicon and platform 
uh, to, to improve the speeds and feeds and also uh, address the sustainability requirement uh, with better power consumption and silicon specialization as well. All right, excellent. Uh, you've you've been busy. Uh, I'll let you I'll let you get back to it and and deliver on 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 some of those things right now. But it's been great catching up with you and learning a bit about Juniper's plans. Uh, thanks for your time today, Chong. Happy to be here. I'm happy talking to you, Sterling. Thank you.